أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد الله تبارك وتعالى says in his glorious book والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات لا نكلف نفسا إلا وسعها أولئك أصحاب الجنة هم فيها خالدون This is in Surah Al-A'raf chapter 7 verse 42 But those who believe and did righteous deeds, we charge no soul except within its capacity. Those are the companions of paradise. They will abide therein eternally. Now my talk today, inshallah, is about the phrase, Amanu amilu salihat. It's a very common phrase that repeats over 200 times in the, in the Quran. Belief by itself is rarely in the Quran. It's always coupled with doing righteous deeds. The two go hand in hand together. In the Fatiha, Allah Taala says, you know, one of the verses that was described as the summary of all revelation, which is verse five. The meaning is in there too. We worship Allah and then we ask for his help when we do our deeds. So both belief and action are represented there as well. So Islam is, is the perfect religion for mankind and it combines doing, you know, it combines belief and action as the requirement for success. Action without belief has no reward. If you don't believe in Allah or do good deeds, you have no reward. And if you believe, but you don't do anything, that is deficient at best. It's, you know, that belief does not, does not help. Iblis believed in Allah. He says, He believed in Allah, but he didn't, you know, he did not want to do any good deeds. So belief by itself will not, will not help and will not save. Action is the proof of what's, what's in the heart. In Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 3, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Who believe in the unseen, establish prayer, and spend out what, they have, what we have provided for them. So they, you know, the belief is there, and then the relationship with Allah, يُقِيمَةَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ That's action. That's the action part. Belief and action is always there. Anywhere you read in the Quran, you'll always find belief you know, linked with action. Now belief at the heart of it is, you know, believing in Allah is not just enough to believe in Allah that he exists. You have to believe in his signs that when you see everything around you in this universe, it leads you to Allah. You see Allah in everything. You see Al-Razzaq, you see Al-Azim, you see Al-Khaliq, you see all of his beautiful names, you see it all around you. And you believe in his divine acts, that when Allah says, if you do wrong, I'm gonna punish you in this world, and you see people that do wrong are getting punished, you see it right in front of you. It's from Allah, you believe that Allah is fulfilling his promise. And then his, you, we believe in his Quran, in his words. So all of these beliefs have to be there to begin with, and then that has to drive the, you know, the action. Now, the, the meaning of the word amana is from a tasdiq. Amana is, is to confirm, is to confirm the belief that you have with action. So it's to be certain and to affirm the truth. That's what amana is. And Allah Taala demonstrated, because his name is al-mu'min, the believer. And for us believers, we can understand, okay, we believe. But what does Allah's name, Al-Mu'min, means? Means Allah confirmed everything that he told us in his Quran, with his actions, with his cosmic signs, with everything. So Allah Taala says the Quran is protected. He is protecting the Quran. 1450 years later, the Quran is still the same even though every non-believer is trying to corrupt it, is trying to change it, 
But Allah Taala says, "I will, I will protect it." He is al mu'min. He confirms his his words with his actions. Allah Taala says, "Lower your gaze, and you'll have a better life." And you see that when people lower their gaze and don't look at things that they shouldn't be looking at, they have a good life. And Allah Taala says, "You know." That's what I just talked about. So only a believer who believes that Allah, he, first of all, you have to believe in Allah's words. And then you believe that Allah is watching you, so you comply. So it drives you to action. And that action, what makes you a mu'min. So Allah's action and words in the Quran confirm each other. You're not going to see anything in the Quran that contradicts anything else. Because Allah is al mu'min. So all of his words affirm each other, all his actions affirm each other. Now, you're not going to find a believer that you ask him, do you believe in Allah? And they're going to tell you no. They're going to say, yes, I believe in Allah emphatically. Well, that's all nice and well. But when you go back and look in some people's background, their income is from haram. They don't pray, they don't fast, they don't you know, do righteous things, they do evil things, they hurt others. People like that, I don't care how much you say you believe in Allah, your words say you're a liar. You do not believe in Allah. Because if you believe in Allah, your actions, that belief has to result in an action that makes you do good things. And that's the measure of the level of your Iman. The higher your Iman, the better your actions are. Because when you believe in Allah and you truly believe that He is going to hold you accountable for every little thing that you do or say, you choose your words carefully and you choose your actions carefully. So, a mu'min is somebody who believes in Allah, believes in His book, believes in His prophets, and does righteous deeds. And a'mal salih is salih, it's called salih because it's fit to present to Allah. It's correct, it's done with the intention to please Allah, and it's fit to present, Ya Allah, this deed is for your sake, and Allah, inshallah, will accept. So iman is when the tongue says, the heart confirms, and the actions confirm. So all three have to be the same. Your tongue cannot say one thing, and your heart says something else, and your actions say something completely different. That's not what a mu'min, that's what a munafiq is. A mu'min, what's on the inside matches what's on the outside, and what comes out of his mouth matches the inside and the outside. There is no, no discrepancy. That's what a mu'min is. Now, for the, the deeds to be correct, you have to have the right intention. So niyyah is very important in Islam. You can do the right thing, but you know, you intend to do something good, and you have the right intention, but you don't, it doesn't materialize. Because you have the right intention, Allah ta'ala, bi'iznihi ta'ala, He will reward you for it, even though you did not accomplish it. But you worked at it, you did your best, you had the intention, but it didn't materialize. That's, you know, that's, that's all good. But if you unintentionally do something good and you had no intention to do it, you'll get no reward for it because the, the intention wasn't there. So it is not the action, it's the intention that measures if that action is accepted or not. And for actions, the more beneficial the action is, the higher its status. So if you have two people, they both have the same position, the same amount of wealth, the same status in their in, you know, in community. But one doesn't do anything and the other one helps others. The one who helps others is a much higher level because his actions benefit more people. It has more benefit to it. The same thing with somebody who has knowledge. You have two people with the exact same knowledge. But one sits on it and you know, keeps it to himself. The other person teaches it to others, spreads it to others. That's a much higher 
that's a much higher status, even though they both have the same, the, the same amount of knowledge. I mean, if you look at the difference between a tyrant and a just ruler, they both have the same authority, but the difference is in how they use their authority to put it in action. A tyrant will oppress people, but a just ruler will use his authority to help others. So the more people benefit, the better that action is. And the Prophet ﷺ and his rest of his brothers in Islam, and the, the rest of the, the prophethood, they had the highest ranks among the believers. They were the best of mankind. And their faith in Allah was solid. There was no problem with their, I mean, their, their level of faith was the highest. And they led by example. When they, they brought the message to mankind, and that's why we love them, because they brought the message and they lived it. They confirmed it with their actions. Their actions did not contradict their message. And then they benefited all mankind. They did not do it to benefit themselves. So if we take our lead from our Prophet Sallallahu and, and, and the rest of the Prophets, that's how we should be. We should have a solid belief in Allah. Our action, our words and actions match and benefit and benefit others. So we have to demonstrate our belief with action. The best action we can do is da'wah, is to, to spread the faith, call others to Allah. That is the highest level, of, that's the best deed. There are so many hadiths that says if you can guide one person, it's better for you than everything that's in this world. And one cannot, I mean, no one should say, I, am, I, I can't call others because my faith is not strong enough. I'm going to wait until my faith is, is, is strong before I call others. Now, if you're going to wait until your faith is complete, you'll never do it. And if you think your faith is complete, you have gone astray. We're all imperfect. We all have, you know, you have to do it in what you know and in who you know. You're not responsible to go and talk, you know, at the, at the global level, at least to your family, to your coworkers, you know, to, to the, sphere, the sphere of people around you. You know that you're supposed to pray five times a day. You know that. I mean, you're knowledgeable in that piece of information. Spread it. You know that you're supposed to fast. Spread that. I mean, you, you do not want to spread things you don't know, you have no knowledge about. So you have to be careful because that's very dangerous, slippery slope. So once you know a matter, you're knowledgeable in it. And then once you know it, spread it to the people around you. Now, now Dawa has its own reward. If, if you look at the, um, there's something that uh, researchers call the learning pyramid. So this learning pyramid says if you attend a lecture, you only retain 5%. So I'm, I'm speaking to you, if you just hear the lecture and don't do anything else, only 5% will stay with you and that's, that's useless. If you, reading will give you 10%. If you use audiovisual, it gives you 20% retention. If you attend a demo, it gives you 30% re uh, retention. And these are all passive, passive techniques. You know, you're just being you know, a passive person. You're not engaged. Once you get to the, you know, the engagement part where you actually have to do something, group discussion, you have 50% retention. Practice by doing 75% retention. And if you teach others, it's 90%. So doing dawah is very beneficial to the person who's doing it. Because you have to study, you have to prepare your material, and then when you disseminate it to others, you're the biggest beneficiary of that action. They will benefit only when they hear it, and they internalize it, and it translates into action but you already have internalized it and you're translating it to action. So you get a very high retention rate from that. So just attending a lecture and not doing anything about it, you're wasting your time. 
it has to materialize into action. The Sahaba alayhim salam, they used to learn the Quran 10 verses at a time. They would learn the 10 verses, they internalize it, they implement it in their lives, and then they move on to the next 10. They don't just read the Quran and it doesn't translate into action. That's why they benefited from it. So the amount of knowledge by itself is not the important thing. It's what you do with that knowledge. Now if you look at Abu Bakr, how much do we love Abu Bakr? Radiallahu anhu. The second he accepted Islam, he immediately went out and guided six of the, the ten people that were the Prophet told that they were going to go to heaven. Now how much information did Abu Bakr have at that time? Who has more knowledge, we or him? We have more knowledge. I mean, he just accepted Islam. He didn't, he didn't know much about Islam at the time. Alhamdulillah, we spent years, we learned everything. We got, you know, volumes and volumes of knowledge. The difference is Abu Bakr took that little bit of knowledge that he got from Rasulullah and he took it out and put it in action. If we do not put that knowledge into action, it, it is worthless. So as, as Muslims, we have to be proud of our faith. We live in a non-Muslim country, we work with non-Muslims. And it, it hurts sometimes when you see people hiding, trying to pray, pray duhr during the business hours, or, or trying to make excuse, oh, my stomach is hurting, I, I don't want to eat lunch. Tell them you're fasting. You should be proud of your faith. Actually, they would respect you. If you respect your own self, respect your own faith, people will respect you. You want to see me, you know, we are, you pray in a, in a conference room, open the door. Let them see. We're I mean, we got nothing to hide. We're proud of our faith. Yes, I am praying. Allah demands that I, I take time out of my schedule to make a connection with Him. That's, that's the best da'wah. You do the da'wah with your actions without opening your mouth. Now, the reward of, of these good deeds for the, the ladina amanu wa amilu salihat. Like I said, iman without action is, is not good. You have to have both. You have to have faith and you have to have action. Now the reward for that is in this life and in the next. In this life, Allah says in Surah Al-Hajj, فَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَرِزْقٌ كَرِيمٌ They have forgiveness and noble provision in this life. In Surah Maryam, verse 96, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ سَيَجْعَلُوا لَهُمُ الرَّحْمَانُ وُدَّةٌ Allah will give, him, give them affection. Affection, would is love translated into action. That means you're going to get a lot of benefit from Allah out of His love. You're going to get Allah's love and whatever comes from that. وَيَسْتَجِيبُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَيَزِيدُهُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ In Surah Al-Shura, verse 26. And He will answer the supplications of the people who do good, who believe and do good. And, uh, the, and increase them out of his bounties. These are all benefits that when, you, when we have the proper belief and we translate it into action, these are all the, the things that we get from Allah. In Surah Al-Talaq, verse 11, يَتْلُوا عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ مُبَيِّنَاتٍ لِيُخْرِجَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ That's the beginning of verse 11. By believing and doing righteous acts, Allah Taala will give you light. Will give, will take you out of the darknesses, the darknesses of ignorance. There are so many darknesses. There's only one light, the light of Allah, and there are so many darknesses. And Allah Taala will take such people from those darknesses into the light, where they see things with the light of Allah. They don't get into trouble. In the hereafter. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ خَيْرُ الْبَرِيَّةِ Allah says those who believe and do righteous deeds are best of creation. Best of all creation. Everything that Allah created, you are the best if you have the proper belief and you do righteous deeds. You are the best. And if you don't, you're the worst. In Surah Yunus, verse 9, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ يَهْدِيهِمْ رَبَّهُمْ بِإِيمَانِهِمْ تَجْرِيهِمْ تَحْتِهِمُ الْأَنْهَارُ فِي جَنَّاتِ النَّعِي
So Allah wa ta'ala will guide these people on the day of judgment on the sirat so they can pass safely and enter to heaven where there is you know, so many beautiful bounties from Allah as a reward for those people who have the right belief and the right action. In Surah Al-Baqarah verse 277, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةِ لَهُمْ أَجْرُهُمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Those people that have the proper belief and the proper action, they do not fear the future on the Day of Judgment because their future is secure. Allah will save them from worrying about going to hell. They know they're going to go to heaven. So their future is secure. La خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا يَحْزَنُونَ And they don't worry. They, they are not concerned about the past because Allah has forgiven the past. So there is, there is a big benefit in having the proper belief and doing righteous deeds for the sake of Allah, doing it correctly. It is so much reward. I mean, if you look, open the Quran, you'll see it all over the place as the, as the reward for such people. Now, one thing I want to bring a difference is between istiqama and amal salih, between steadfastness and righteous deeds. They're not the same thing. Steadfastness is the absence of deviation. Look at it as the steering wheel of a car. You know, you're, you know, if you're turning left and right, you keep it straight, but you're not moving. You're, you're, you're standing still. Steadfastness moves the, the, the obstacles out of the way on your way to Allah. But amal salih your, your righteous deeds, your good deeds, are like the engine. That's what propels you forward towards Allah. So you need both. You need istiqama and you need that propulsion, which is al-amal salih You need both of them. Because if you have an engine and you don't have a steering wheel, you're going to end up in the ditch. And if you have a steering wheel and no engine, you're not moving anywhere. You need both. You need istiqama and you need amal al-salih. Both of them together. So amal al-salih is a positive action. It's spending. It's giving charity. It's offering, you know, helping others. While istiqama is something negative. I will not lie. I will not sin. I will not. It's the absence of deviation. So you need both of them to propel you forward to Allah. So with good action, you, receive, you, you achieve happiness. And with steadfastness, you achieve safety. So you need both of them. Now, one verse that I want to conclude with is in Surah An-Nur, verse 55. There's two parts of it. I'm going to mention the first part first. وَعَضَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لا يستخلفنهم في الأرض كما استخلف الذين من قبلهم ولا يمكنن لهم دينهم الذي ارتضى لهم ولا يبدلنهم من بعد خوفهم أمنا. That's the first part. Allah تبارك وتعالى promised the people who believe and do righteous deeds that He would step, He would give them authority in this in this life on in you know so that they can rule like he did it for people before them. And he will establish their faith like he established, you know, and he will replace their fear with safety. Now you look at the Muslims nowadays, we don't, we don't have authority in the land. Our religion is attacked from all directions and it's not established. And we live in fear. We don't have safety. But Allah is promising, promising this to the people who believe amanu wa amilu salihat And Allah always keeps His promise. Now the Sahaba alayhim salam, they have, I mean, they, have, they believed in the Qur'an, the same Qur'an we believe in. They believe in the same Prophet. Their God is our God. Allah supported them. Where is Allah's support in our lives? Now this support is at the personal level. And at the community level, and at the nation level, and at the global level. If you notice that Allah's support is missing in your life, but Allah promised. If you amanu amilu salihat, Allah promised you these things. Now the second part of the verse, Allah clarifies that He will do that 
if we do what? يَعْبُدُونَنِي لَا يُشْرِكُونَ بِي شَيْئًا وَمَنْ كَفَرَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ The promise from Allah is contingent that we worship Him and not associate anyone with Him. If we do that, then Allah Taala will fulfill His promise because Allah never breaks His promise. So if Allah's support is missing in our lives, that means we have a portion of that we worship Allah, but we have some shirk, some associations in our life that we need to attend to at the personal level and at the community level and at the nation level. And Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا يُؤْمِنُوا أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا هُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ Most people believe in Allah, but they associate, associate others with Him. Now, there is shirk that gets you out of Islam, but there's small shirks, little, little bit here and there, that just kind of eats at you. You know, when, when you see something, something nice, and you thank the person and forget about Allah, that's shirk. Allah brought it to you, and you're thanking somebody else? Now, you don't think of it that way. And that's where, when knowledge increases, you start paying attention to these things. And when you pay attention to these things, you start seeing Allah in everything around you. When you get to that level, then Allah's promise of support, establishment, and, and give you authority, that's when Allah's promise will, will materialize in your life and in your surrounding.